Hey there, I'm really excited to shoot this video. Um, I posted on my Instagram questions and answers for a Q&A, um, and I got a lot of great questions, a lot of variety. This is the third time I'm shooting this video because last time my dog, Arthur, decided to bark a ton because he thought he heard something, but he didn't. So he's going to be sitting in here with me, but I'm gonna put him on the floor. So say hi, Arthur. All right, get down there. Second, I'm wearing a hat because it's haircut day and it's just a mess. So let's kick this off. Uh, first question is, how did I pay off my student loans? And well, how did I pay off my student loans so quickly and any other financial advice that I could give? So first I graduated in 2009 with the bachelor's in kinesiology and had 80, over $80,000 in debt. That was partially, very small portion of it was credit card. I owed my mom and dad some money. And then the rest was uh, Sally Mae, which is about 75 grand with very high interest. So when I graduated, I got a job, as we all do. It paid probably what everyone, most people make after college. Not great, but not terrible. Um, and allowed me to make kind of the minimum payments, which means $80 of my monthly $575 payment was going towards the principal, which clearly was not enough. So then I switched to a sales job and have been doing that for the last six years. My income went up, I made, started making really good money and I just sacrificed the extra money I was making towards my loans. I paid thousands a month. I ended up paying this last year over 50 grand uh, to finish off my student loans um, to get done with it because I felt like it was a ball and chain. It was holding me down. I didn't want to have it anymore. And now that I'm 33 and debt free, it feels so good because I thought I was going to be in the worst situation forever. So, you know, it's just a mindset. I didn't go in like, oh, I'm a victim to the student loans. I'm not, I'm going to wait for, you know, the government to take care of it. I'm like, no, you need to take care of this on your own. Uh, you deserve to live a great financially free life and not have this burden. So that's kind of how I took care of it. Um, as far as, as far as the financial advice, I look at money very differently. Um, you know, when I get paid, I actually see how long I can keep onto it and save it. And I pay myself first and I diversify. So I invest it. I, um, paid off my loans, obviously put more towards the balance. Now I have more money to invest. I have, you know, potential to get another property or invest in real estate or, invest in my blog and my business, which I'm doing as well. So it's just, it just gives you that more diversified freedom, which I love. I will continue to write and talk more about financial freedom and, and financial choices I've made that's been proven to help me with my success. So stay tuned for that in my blog um, and other you know avenues of my social media. So next question is on mindset and motivation. Um, it's kind of a very vague question, you know, um, but I'll tell you one piece of advice is, you need to talk to yourself um, how it will motivate you and how you should be talked to. So what I mean by that is you spend the most time with yourself, no one else, right? And if you're bringing yourself down or you're thinking negatively, negatively, it's going to negatively impact your day. It's gonna negatively impact your uh, progress, your outcomes and everything. So what I do is every morning I wake up, I write down some things I'm grateful for because if, you, if you're grateful for the things you have, you will be so much happier than focusing on the things you don't have or focusing on the things that are going wrong. And then I sit there and meditate and focus on my breathing and really start the day disconnected from the world and connecting with myself. It sounds really cheesy um, and really lame, but it does, it works and it makes you feel really good. So I do that and then I also work out in the morning, which gets me in that right state of mind. It makes me empowered, it makes me motivated and driven. And that's why I like to do it in the morning because it really helps set the tone for my day. Um, third question, how do you stick to goals when you're single and doing it alone and keeping up with your friends? So for the record, I'm not single anymore and it makes me really happy because I found such an amazing guy. Um, but when I was single and after my last relationship, right before I got sober, I said, Sam, you're gonna figure out how to take care of yourself and do this on your own. And before you do that, you can't you can't be in another relationship, you can't do this, you can't do that because you need to figure out 
yourself, you need to heal and you need to be happy. So I really, you know, immersed myself in work, immersed myself in my goals and really did some self-discovery. There were tons of lonely nights. There were tons of missing out. There was tons of FOMO, but you think of that very short term um, and it produces great results because I've discovered who I am. I discovered what makes me happy. I discovered what, you know, life is all about. And then I happened to meet Adam when I was in the peak of my self-discovery. And now I found someone that I can kind of grow with and develop with and set goals together. So it's really empowering once you be alone with yourself and figure your shit out, you just, it, it's worth it. It's those lonely nights and those skipping out on everything is totally worth it to figure out yourself and heal because you have to heal to do that. So that was a great question. Second one, fast food chain. That depends on the day. Um, if you know me now and um, understand that Taco Bell is kind of my weak spot, used to be McDonald's, um, but I know it sounds gross, but we all have our vices and sometimes a little bit of fast food is really hits the spot. So yo quiero Taco Bell right now. Um, next question. Let's move on from that because now I'm craving it for some weird reason. Um, how to deal with negative negativity in your own family and depression. Um, sorry, Arthur wants up again. Here. So dealing with negativity and your own family. Um, I mean, it really depends on your goals, what you want to accomplish. But in reality, when you grow, you outgrow people, you change your mindset, you change who you hang out with, you change who you bond with. I mean, I've been really close. I am really close with my family. You know, we go through ebbs and flows where I've been really close with one sister over another sister and vice versa, but I love them all. They are all really supportive, but you do outgrow some certain aspects and just as I've outgrown some things in my life, that's okay. They're growing as well in, in different in different ways, um, but you can't let it bring you down. You can't let anyone's negativity or um, outlook really affect you because it can't, it's, not, it's not about them, it's about you. And having these conversations with your family or your friends is really important. One thing I'm I'm really proud of myself for is finally being authentically Sam and really coming into my own on who I am and who I should be, which really empowers me a lot. Um, and I love that. And then as with the depression piece, um, I was really depressed when I was drinking and it was because I was coping with trying to be someone I felt like I wasn't, you know? Um, growing up gay, I learned to really cope with alcohol and that would spiral me into depression. I would do things I didn't want to do um, or I would never do sober. I binge drank until I was blacked out, throwing up, all of that stuff. And like I said before, I'm a th over three years sober and that was just making me depressed. I think when you're honest with yourself, you really come into your own and you're honest with others, you will lead a much more fulfilling life and going back to being that authentic person that you should be. Next one, this is a little bit lighter of a topic. Um, Ariana Grande or Taylor Swift? Well, that's an easy one, Taylor Swift. I'm such a Swifty. And after watching her documentary, I love her even more. I always love, you know, quirky, dorky nerds. Um, right, Adam? Uh, but, you know, uh, it's something about them, once again, being the authentic selves. And I really like Taylor, her music, her evolution, and some of the things she stands for. So. Next question. So this is a fun one. When are you going to propose to Adam? So um, me and Adam have been together almost a year. Actually, it's coming up um, in a few days, a few weeks. It depends on what you qualify as a year. Um, almost been a year since I slid into his DMs, if you will. Um, but, you know, one thing I've learned about past relationships and just as you get older is you don't need to rush into anything. Um, we're in, in a very healthy relationship, a very good spot right now. He's still in school for another year and a half. So once he's done, maybe that's the right time. Just need to figure out the right place. Um, but stay tuned for that. And then last is, <clears throat> take a drink. 
Last is what vitamins and supplements are in my routine? I love this question and I'm actually going to create an entire post about it um, because really your supplements and your vitamins depends on your goals, depends on your body, depends on what you want to try to accomplish. Um, but some of my favorites are every morning I wake up and take a B vitamin and a C. B for some energy, C for the immune, for some skin glowing, all of that stuff. Um, and then I drink BCAs while I'm working out because I work out fasted. Um, and fasted for a good, you know, 15 hours or so. So the BCAs help fuel my muscles while I work out. And then when I'm done working out, I eat a banana and have a protein shake. Um, that is gluten-free and dairy-free. Usually it's egg whites. And then um, some of my favorite supplements are if I'm doing low carb, I like to do MCT oil and um, a ginseng vitamin in the afternoon to kind of pick me up, maybe with some cold brew or some coffee. And then at night, one of my favorite ones that I just started implementing is magnesium. So I take the cup supplement called Calm and mix it a couple teaspoons right before I go to bed. And... Um, it helps you sleep, it helps your digestion, it helps your mind, it helps um, get everything in place and it really helps put me in a, a really deep sleep. Don't take too much, uh, you could shit your pants. Disclosure, I have not done that, but I've heard you can. So make sure if you're doing magnesium, start off slow and add up. But yeah, that's kind of my vitamins and supplements. I do take some more, you know, I take turmeric that helps with inflammation, pain. It's just great for your cells as well. Take some black seed oil sometimes as well, but really it just depends on what you're looking for. And I will create a whole post um, for my blog about that. So uh, time is up. I got all my questions answered. Such a good variety of questions. I'm glad that you guys participated. Um, hold on, Arthur wants to say goodbye too. Come here. So everyone have a great night. Arthur, say bye. His face says it all. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great night and stay tuned for some more.